Okay, remember that they're changing my voice? And sometimes when I really start catching a flow and I really start saying things a certain way that kind of is smooth and it's going well, they try to make it so I sound like a propaganda person. Like, you know, it reminds me of Khalid Muhammad, or like a Black Panther saying propaganda. They edit my voice with various technologies and they edit my videos as well. They're using fumes and poisons. This is the modern day psychological operation that they're doing. This is the modern day, you know, technological interference that they're running. The hacking, the brain hacking. The reason why the leader of Hamas looks like he's in a trance-like state in so many pictures of his. The reason why so many people on TikTok look like they're in a trance-like state. So it is stupid to harass me, especially sexually, which is what this video is about. And to then act like people are magically going to believe they're oppressors and not the most honest person that ever lived. That's crazy. Nobody likes people who harass people, okay? When we think about the LGBT community and popular culture, excuse me, popular culture, and no offense to anybody, no offense to the LGBT community, right? Quite often people think, and perhaps to some degree unfairly, of LGBT people who are harassing them, right? A gay guy who won't leave you alone when you walk by, who cat calls you like, a, like a, some kind of, you know, aggressive guy would cat call a female. Okay, no one wants to be sexually harassed, whether you're a female at, 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 in a corporate work, a corporate workplace, and someone puts their arm on their shoulder and they're trying to work their way into your pants, or whether you're a straight guy being harassed by a gay guy. Part of the reason why corporations are seen as dens of oppressors, dens of robbers, dens of iniquity, is because they sexually harass people. It's because they make rules they make it harder for an attractive female working at that corporation to date someone who's not in a corporation because they say it reflects poorly on the corporation. So their life decisions, their romantic decisions become connected uh, to the corporation's processes. If we took a vote, I'm sure the masses of LGBT people would vote against them harassing me. There's no point. I'm not even going to have any children with any women. I'm not going to have any children, period. I'm not going to bring children into this world. When my flesh dies, that's it. Whether or not you agree with my sexual orientation, whether or not you agree with my refusal to be gay, you should realize that I have a right to disagree with you. You should realize that after I'm gone, that's it. No one's going to continue my work. So it is insane to think that you should sexually harass me to somehow give the LGBT community or whites or Jews or token minorities or whoever the upper hand. That is, that is outrageous. That is retarded. That is like a retard screaming in a strange way. Okay, no offense to people who are mentally challenged. Okay. Screaming in a strange way, thinking it's respectful. Excuse me, thinking it's respectable. There's no words for how stupid that is. You think that if you sexually harass me every day, you get something. You think that if you fume me and poison me and make it harder for me to speak, that you get something. How many of you, if a family member was dying and they're struggling to, you know, to speak, how many of you would ignore them? And instead, Praise the person that shot them and caused them to be in that state. How many of you, if you saw Martin Luther King or someone you respected after he was shot and struggling to speak, would you not care what they have to say? If Jesus was struggling on his words in the story, on the cross, especially because gays have sexually harassed him because whites and Jews who have money and, and worldly power ordered them to, and he was struggling on his words. How many of you well, we would, would believe the oppressor and not the son of God? How many of you would believe that the oppressor has improved his stance? It's stupid. It's childish. It's sick. It's disgusting. How many of you make your pitch to a woman by doing something disgusting? Something unbelievably just repulsive, just unbelievable, makes people throw up. 
then why on earth would they think that doing the most disgusting thing someone can think of, which is sexually harassing the Son of God as a homosexual, harassing the straight and heterosexual Son of God, how could they think that's helping them? Were they raised by a serial killer? Were they raised by Jeffrey Dahmer or Gacy or the Son of Sam? Were they raised by the Night Stalker or Ted Bundy? They raised by fucking Jason Voorhees or Freddy Krueger? Do they think that Marilyn Manson is the most respectable person that ever lived? And that he'd be more respectable if he harassed the top martial artist ever possible? Who could make such a mistake? How many of you, if you saw an attractive female and she's about to choose someone, no offense to Marilyn Manson, but I think that you're, he's, he's a good example. She saw her having to choose between him and me and she chose Marilyn Manson, how many of you would respect it? If he, she chose Donald Trump or Elon Musk or somebody based on their wealth and their, their celebrity status instead of based on the content of the character, the heart and wisdom based on what God set apart as ideal. How many of you would respect it? That's fucking pathetic. If you saw some Walter Peck from Ghostbusters with a whistle and a thong and a propeller hat crying and throwing the fit and say, no, he's not supposed to say that. Uphold the propaganda. How many of you would respect that? So as you can see, I've definitively proven a million times over that it is stupid for them to order LGBT people to sexually harass me. And, and furthermore, if they think that that will make it so you believe that the Son of God magically is something he could never be, which is gay, they've lost their minds. Because they're also using the popular culture. What is an LGBT person in popular culture, right? You know, look at the gay parades, right? They're skinny and so on and so forth. They're being used to take away from the appeal of the minorities on the left. Now, no offense to anybody, but when we look at the movies, right, there's these indigenous people and they come in all these colors and they're, they're, you know, they're touched by the sun and so on and so forth. They're on the beach, they're in the jungle. They're doing something profound and, and appealing. And then here comes the colonists like Dick Dastardly, like Lex Luthor, super jealous. And then he, he takes their women. That's why so many people are mixed from colonialism. And then he says, hey, how can he get the, the, the indigenous women to date the token minorities who he tells what to do, who often are related to him, or to date him instead of the most righteous of their people and the most righteous of all people, the African, the black African mulatto son of God from a black patriarchal line? He's, he asks himself, how can he do that? And he says, well, if he makes them gay, the most attractive and most ideal of women will reject it flat out. They won't respect that. So he says he's going to use that and group them together on the left. And if they're dumb enough to go on the right, well, then they're in complete submission directly to the corporate supremacists. There's no way around it. That's the obvious truth. So we see gay people are, are, are quite often, no offense to the LGBT community, I'm not trying to offend you. If you think this is offensive, we can discuss it in the comments. You see quite often they're like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Likeable guy, he's a friendly guy, a funny guy, but he's not martial artist material. Okay, we look at Steve Jobs, one of the most famous homosexuals in modern history. He's a likeable guy from what I gather. He's a pretty educated guy, but he's not top martial artist material. So as we go through every gay person we see in popular culture, we look at the gay parades, we see that none of them are top martial arts material. So if the goal was to convince people that magically, that the Son of God would magically be that when he couldn't possibly be, there's no point because it's not going to work. It's like convincing people that a cow can jump over the moon naturally. It's not worth the time. And if the point is just to rebel against God and just to try to insult God through his son? How stupid is that? How dumb? If you're an agnostic because you're not smart enough to know that there must be a God, okay, you know that that risk is not worth taking. If you're monotheistic, 
you know for sure that risk is not worth taking. And if you're an atheist, someone who, who believes that they know for sure that magically there's no God, then you're not very smart because you've discounted what to the scientist is the most logical explanation for why we're here. What came first? If not something that is most, so 